Looks like we already have eight people ready to watch. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining us here for this special event of all kinds of amazing authors who are here to um, help support a wonderful cause. Uh, we have uh, with us right now on the stream, we have myself, Ramon Mejia, Little Bitty Podcast, and Ari Mejia. We also have with us Dakota Grout. Say hello, Dakota. Hey, everyone. How's it going? Dakota is the author of The Ritualist. He is also the author of The Divine Gentian series, two amazing lit RPG series. And we saw have with us um, Michael Chatfield, who is the author of many, many, many great things, um, including the Emma Riley series, which is the lit RPG uh, series. Say hey, Mike. Hey, guys. How's it going? Yeah, same here. And, of course, we're all here to support um, a wonderful cause in which uh, I will pull up their particular website for uh, authors for St. Jude, um, where they're doing a, uh, Dakota's organized this. It's going to be a um, silent auction, um, bidding on a bunch of great, amazing prizes, including like huge, like signed physical copies um, of a bunch of titles, including Little BG, Game Lit, Science Fiction, Fantasy. Um, we have individual sets from different authors, all starting at different bids. And all the bidding is starting today, I believe. Is that correct, uh, Dakota? Yes, it is. Um, <clears throat> so you kind of grab my whole intro there. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, um, <laughs> no, you're fine. Um, but yeah, it's it's an awesome thing. Um, and uh, like you were saying, we do have all sorts of uh, different packages you can bid on. Um, so we are uh, starting every bid at $5 a book, basically, is how that breaks down. So we have all these um, these packages of books. So it, it looks like there's a high price tag, but you're getting it for you can start the bids for less than the wholesale price of these books. So hopefully, you know, I mean, this is for charity, so hopefully people are like, yeah, I want those books really bad. Um, so yeah, it's uh, Authors for St. Jude, so there is a lot of really super awesome um, authors that donated. We have, um, you know, a little over a dozen, I think, that all, I mean, every, everyone wanted to participate, not everyone had physical copies of their books. So, um, you know, thank you to everyone who did participate, and you know, thank you to everyone who wanted to participate because, um, you know, that's just awesome, and it's awesome of you to do that. Hey, James. Hey, perfect. And uh, joining us is James Hunter, whose name I couldn't remember until somebody reminded me. Uh, <laughs> Terrible. He is a. We can't oh, hear him. Need to turn, you need yeah. to turn that way up. We can't hear him in his purple room of, of, of writing <laughs> desire. Uh, but we can see him. Uh, I will share at least his. Uh, his page, you can see some of his stuff here while he will be getting uh, hooked up to some mics here at least. Uh, let's see. There we go. And let me see if that's uh, on me first. And there we go. Sorry, I'll kind of ship it around. Uh, but there's Jace Hunter as the uh, Rooting Gate series. He, of course, has the War God mantle as his two little bitches, but also has a number of other um, urban fantasy novels. And some other actually sci fi novels under a different pen name. But welcome to the particular stream, James. So thanks a lot. And there's James Hunter whispering like it's a <laughs> library. Uh, again, I think he's begging your forgiveness, but he also wants you to purchase all of his books, um, yep, complete sets. Uh, he says, I have children to feed. They're going to be going to college at some point. I have to save it for them now. Please, please purchase. So there's James. We'll, we, but we can all chat amongst ourselves as as the thing goes on. We were just talking to... Um, Michael Chatfield, he's actually doing a huge like tour of the world, which I am particularly envious about. Uh, Michael, why don't you tell us a little bit about that and, and, and how it's going for you? Um, yeah, so I decided that I wanted to play video games and write a little bit around the world. So kind of got on a plane and uh, been running about kind of like a headless chicken so far, um, mostly learning how Google Translate uh, works because... Learning other languages is not my forte, and I think if I was to probably learn another language, it would start showing up in books, which would probably be not so good. Um, but yeah, no, it's it's been a lot of fun just to be like seeing like I've been playing video games in every single uh, country, and like sometimes it's like I play um, like PC games, um, but I, I've got into like gamer cafes and that good stuff, which has been. Um, an eye-opening experience and um, especially because you forget um, what time is and so when it's seven <laughs> o'clock in the morning and then you're leaving you're like oh 
what have I done with my life? And um, that was really good fun. Um, but yeah, no, it's it's been a great bit of fun. Um, it's uh, led to a lot of inspiration for uh, new books. So that should be a lot of fun uh, coming up. Um, and well, I went to uh, a place that James will know very well, uh, Thailand there, because he lived in Thailand for, for quite a few years. Actually. Okay. I'm glad you explained that because that has some other connotations. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> Teeny bit better, but he's like, no, mur, 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 mur. Thailand is, was great. I lived in Thailand and I had yeah. lots of fun. Yeah. That's, that's what we're getting currently. That's what I got too. <laughs> and then he says in chat, uh, you are all the worst. <laughs> we all are. If we we weren't, we probably you, wouldn't be your friends. Hey, uh, Ramon, can you uh, hop into your control center and see if you can max his volume out on there? Oh, sure. Uh, let me see if I can do that for him. James Hunter, up all the way. Any better? Any better? Way a little better. bit. Yeah. Uh, okay. So I'm, okay. Well, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna like okay. stick this thing in my face here. Nice. And I'm, just, I'm just gonna goober it. Oh, yeah, that's good. There you go. Now we got you. Yep. Okay. Good call, yes. Dakota. Yes, I lived in Thailand. As an international aid worker, it was not there like a party with my white children, so just setting the record straight. <laughs> and uh, nothing, nothing weird or illicit was going on. I swear, we were we were working there, doing good things, helping people. Yeah. So we we all know that you're the best of us. Uh huh. <laughs> also, I have real quick because because Ramon said this, and I have to set the record straight. Not not because I don't like Aaron's books. So. I don't have a pen name. So the books that everyone thinks are a pen name, they're not. They're, that's a real person that oh. we publish who is named Aaron. That, so, like, the guy who co-authored the War God books with me, that's the same guy who wrote that uh, sci-fi series. But it's not me. Oh. I just want to go on the record because everyone's like, so, dude, you're, like, getting into sci-fi with a pen name. And I'm like, nope, I'm not 100% <laughs> not doing that. Just still writing all the things that I've always been writing. So... Because there it is, on the level. Very nice. Well, thank you for clearing that up. We appreciate it. Uh, we have our first question from chat um, from Danielle. She says, uh, D- she says you shave, Chatfield. Um, no, she's noticing no, that you're missing your, your trademark <laughs> beard. And well, I want to kind of read, read his no attention problem. like that. He, he used to have like this full, thick, manly beard. And for some reason, he's decided to, to betray Beard Kai. Can you, can you tell us a little bit about that, Michael? <laughs> um, I was in Japan. And um, when you're eating a lot of uh, soup-based items, it is not the best to have a beard. Um, it, it, it's great if you want later snacks, um, but not essential to day-to-day function or like sense of smell, because uh, it sometimes get in the old uh, mustache there. Um, but yeah, no, like now seeing it, uh, Dakota's now like growing back his beard, and, uh, and, and James has got his beard going in full force. It's like. Yeah, I'm going to have to like not shave for the entire time leading up to Dragon Con now. Well, I mean, it takes you like two weeks, so. I and, and just for the record, I'm glad that it was a Danielle who brought it up, or Daniel, yeah. because Danielle. it's the first thing I noticed. Because when I was at Dragon Con with Michael, I was like, like, oh, oh man. He's so dreamy man. with his. He's so dreamy with his with his lush Canadian yep. beard. And then I was like, "Who is this boy child on the screen in front of me? Surely this is not the same guy that I remember the Dreamboat from Dragon Con. That is facial hair. What's going on?" So I'm I'm glad I'm not the first one to say it, but I was thinking it. That was the first thing I was like, <laughs> "Different. He's changed so much." Well, Ramon was like, oh, yeah, he's like lost 10 on the manliness con. Then Dakota comes right in afterwards, and he's like, yeah, he's like, uh, what's it? Uh, Constitution is like just plummeted. I'm like, oh, God. Armor class. <laughs> yep, you dropped, you dropped some armor class there. And there, there was a well, bus the, the, that came through here, and I was underneath the entire thing. Yeah, like the, but the beard, for real, though, like the beard absorbs like mace blows and arrows. Like it stops mm-hmm. them dead in the track. It's all kinds of extra armor points for this thing, man. It's incredible. <laughs> Yeah, even Uh-oh. chats like in any case now. I think Hasper says, ladies, uh, but, uh, uh, yeah, at Boychild I mean, it's, it's is uh, Mike's yeah. <laughs> new, new, new Twitter handle, at Boychild. At Boychild. At Boychild, I see it. <laughs> that's, that's your new <laughs> at sign, apparently, Mike. All right. Oh, so, um, oh also, uh, speaking of Danielle, because uh, she was the one that brought this up, I just wanted to uh, give a big uh, shout out to Danielle for putting together the auction site. Um, so she found all the details on that. Um, she is the one that uh, did all the placement, all the ad 
stuff like like uh, photographs and setting up the collages, and she put a lot of work into it, and it looks amazing. So thank you this, so what, very much. This is this is your Danielle, right? Your wife. Yeah. Yes. Oh well, thank you, thank you, Danielle. Yeah, thank you, Danielle, for, for again doing all, all the work all for the Dakota for once stuff. again. Yeah. Proving that she's the better crowd once again. Yes. <laughs> <I don't mind>. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I've got to say, it, Danielle is like when when I've had a conversation with Dakota, and nearly every single time I hear in the background, "Hey, Jeffield, how's it going?" I'm like, "Hey, Danielle, how's it going?" And I'm like, "Who's this Dakota guy? Like, why am I talking to him? Like, can I just go right to Danielle?" It's true. Yeah. Oh. It would be faster in a lot of instances. Yeah. Um. Great. Yeah. She's, she's pretty awesome. Um. So yeah, she's uh. Definitely the sweet kraut to my sour kraut, you know. So. Yeah. And in chat, she says, uh, thank you, guys. Heart, heart, heart. She's super sweet. I met her at Dragon Con. I was like, oh, yeah, she's like, oh, she's way too good for Dakota. Like, she's. Oh, very much He so. stepped up. He, he, he definitely oh, yeah. scored there. That's for I sure. I married up. I was trying to yeah. be a trophy husband, but it didn't work out. Uh. <laughs> yeah, that was always my plan, too. My, my wife, before we got into the writing business, she was, uh, before we went to Thailand, she, was, uh, she worked at a pharmaceutical company. I was like, man, yep. I am just like. She's my sugar mama, and I'm just gonna like stay at home and play my video games. I'm done with the Marine Corps, yep. and uh, it didn't wash out that way. But man, a guy can dream, right? Always Same can thing dream. happened to me. Same thing happened to me. Doctor Kraut upstairs, you know, she married, uh, you know, specialist Kraut, you know, in the army, and so <laughs> when I got out, I started writing. Same deal, and uh, now we're hopefully both gonna be able to stay out because I'm I'm a full time author now, and uh, the hope is that. In, within the next few months we can all be at home but we'll, we'll see what happens because she does have a very good job so it's gonna be gonna take some convincing we'll see what i can do though no no i agree on the same yeah. thing like i also married up so i think all three or four of us really did my wife's a professor she teaches at several colleges and i used to be like a janitor and like a substitute teacher and before I become a writer i'm like oh yeah she definitely you know, I, I I scored there as well. Um, and then there's Mike, Mike. Just left Thailand, yeah. And then there's Mike all alone, <laughs> his beardless face not attracting the high quality women <laughs> that the other guys are, are definitely pulling in. He was he was in Japan. I'm just gonna say this: like he was just in Japan, and they're not all they're not all big on the hairy. So I'm kind of curious, been, like in Japan, like what is this. what's your line in Japan to like get the to the ladies interested in you, man? What are we? Um, I'm, let me guess. Um, let me guess. Um, is it? Um, arigato. Thank, thank you. That's what you're going for. That was a, that was a very smoldery arigato. That yeah. was, I like that. It's easier. With it's, it's also goodbye. So I, I don't know. Uh, did you not talk to him the first bit? It was just like arigato. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, no, I, I've got a lot to learn. It seems uh, marrying up um, is is definitely one, and never shave, never. Never <laughs> apparently, uh, definitely not before coming onto a stream. Apparently, <laughs> <laughs> I was actually thinking of that yesterday because I like I had I had something. All right, okay, I'm not gonna say I had a full beard, but I had something, and then I was like, drunkenly at 2 a.m. Oh, I'm gonna shave this off. I'm gonna look all professional. And I woke up the next morning. I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're fine. Yep. Um, but yeah, oh, uh, sorry. So um, real quick, back on on topic for the uh, uh, Saint Jude thing. So uh, so just so everyone knows, um, the packages that you can bid on are uh, you know it has all the details on them right there. Um, all proceeds from this are going directly to Saint Jude's Children's Hospital, um, and it is going to be for research for um, childhood diseases and such. Um, and you know, it's just a really, really super good cause. You know, St. Jude's does not, uh, it, it's, as far as I know, they do not charge, um, parents for the, uh, care of their kids. So the kids get the care that they need. So this will help that. So it's, it's a really super good cause. So, um, feel free to, you know, bid on the packages or just go, there's a donate now button and you can donate directly to them. So, um, oh, and this, this does go for a week. So the stream is tonight, but the, um, the auction goes all week. So feel free to really pump those numbers up. There we go. Charity stuff. Yeah. Checked. No. Yeah. Now back to that beard conversation. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go to the book conversation, all right? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, hey guys, what do you guys have uh, what do you guys have coming up here? 
So um, I know Chatfield has what, like six, seven books on you're sitting on, and you know. Do you really, James Chatfield, Mister? Oh, I'm <laughs> I'm taking my time with this now. Uh, I have this, you know, huge, you know, two hundred thousand page novel. It's not a not a book a month anymore. So what are you working on, man? Um, <laughs> Uh, I have an old sci-fi uh, series. Like before, I came into little RPG. I was writing this sci-fi series, and then, um, like, to take a, a bit of a break from it, I, I started writing little RPG because, like, instead of actually playing video games, I started writing about them. It was very strange. Um, but uh, so now I'm going back to that sci-fi series, and that should be coming out in August until the end of the year. I'm hoping for like five books or so in between that. Um, Dang, dude. But, yeah, it's gonna be fun. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, the uh, I, I started writing a, a new lit RPG series, and I've started putting it up on Patreon and Raw Road. Um, and the thing is, is that I started writing it, and then I was writing it. It was it was way too fast. Like everything was progressing really, really, really fast. Everyone was getting OP as hell, and I was like, no, no, I'm not doing this. And so I changed the entire storyline. And sorry, sorry to interrupt. Is that Ten Realms? Yeah, yeah. Okay, because I'm I'm following that pretty closely, and I really like it. So just fine. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> so um, that's going to be like a, a big, big book. Um, the way it's looking, um, simply because um, it is. I don't want to say more than that. Yeah, um, it is. That works. Yeah. Be, yeah. <laughs> Like it, it sounds like when I talked to Luke Chimilenko of the Ascend Online series, he was just like, "Yeah, like I was writing, and it just, I just couldn't stop writing, and it, it's kind of like that, and I, it's really fun um, because it goes into a lot of the, the characteristics and stuff I've wanted to go into before, like base building is about the biggest hint I'm going to give. But yeah, no, that's uh, that's how books are going right now. Um, well, how about you guys? What are you guys up to? <laughs> uh, let's go with James Hunter. What are you up to, James Hunter? Oh, man, I don't even know where to start. I uh, got a lot of books that I'm working on concurrently and uh, a lot that are slated to be done this year. So War God 2, uh, War God's Mantle 2 is done. That one's at the editor. It's going to come out in a couple of weeks. Uh, so I'm excited about that and uh, working on an outline for War God 3. Uh, and I'm also, right now, I'm working on uh, Viridian Gate Online 6. So that's my next uh, solo project that I'm working on. And then I have a, uh, at some point, I'm going to ask Dakota to read it. It's a, a radically strange uh, sort of dungeon novel. All right. Really weird, but it's, uh, it's, it is, it's Lit RPG Dungeon. And then I'm also working on a... Uh, Lit RPG uh, space opera, which I think will be good. And then I have two more urban fantasy titles to finish this year in, my, uh, in this series, the Yancey <laughs> Lazarus series. There's a little plug there. So i got two more books to finish in that one. And then I'm trying to write a high fantasy book. I got a meeting with a uh, uh, big editor over at uh, uh, one of the traditional publishing houses. And uh, he's interested in picking up a, a new uh, fantasy, high fantasy series, not not lit RPG, just a straight high fantasy uh, that I'm also going to try to do this year. So that's what I'm going to try to do this year is write all the words and all the books. So that's my plan. That sounds familiar. I like that plan. That's that's my plan. Basically. <laughs> I like that plan. But yeah, dungeon novel, man. I so I'm watching the chat at the same time, and as soon as you mention it, Falcon's like, "Excuse me." Yeah, yeah. Falcon pops in. <laughs> yeah. You're like, "Oh, dungeon novel." Mm. Yes. So yeah, man. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, I. I'm I'm excited to read that because I I love that sort of thing. Like everyone's like, oh, don't you hate the competition? I'm like, oh, I I love books, so it's glorious. And when you say it's a weird book, that's right up my alley. Because I was like, ooh, weird. That's like me. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Sounds amazing. <laughs> it's odd is something not cookie cutter. Like this is great. Yeah, I'm got to be odd to be number one, right? Like this. Uh, not, I mean, not not all, but I've read, I've read all, all. I, I mean, I've read all your guys's books. I've read uh, Falcon's books, and I really like the dungeon stuff. And for a long time, I thought, like, I don't think, like, I really enjoyed them, but I thought, I don't think that I can write this because they're, like, they're too base building. And I was like, I'm not sure how to do that well and still tell an interesting story. You guys do it really well. Oh, and uh, so for a long time, I was like, eh, I feel like I don't know how to do this and, and have it still be inside, like, the wheelhouse of things that I can do. But it was always kind of, like, stewing in the back of my brain. It's like, this is a thing that I do want to do at some point when I figure out a story that would work with it. And I finally figured something out and I was like, all right, this is going to be different, but 
it will sort of uh, scratch that itch to write this kind of book while also fitting inside of all of the things that I actually know how to do well as a storyteller. So I mean, I'm really excited. I have been, I have not been this excited about a series in a long time. So I'm pretty pumped. Um, just, just starting on it, but it, it'll probably be done in about uh, a month and a half or so. Sure. And I'm really excited to get it out there and see what people think. So, or if they hate it and they're like, boo, James Hunter, don't ever write <laughs> this type of book again. And then I'll just walk away in shame and I'll do something else. I it's okay. Doubt it. I yeah. highly doubt you. I mean, it happens. Like Lots of folks in the chat room saying hello. It, and, you got Jacob Taylor, still. Dave Wilmarth, Emily Rose saying hello. Um, yep, Falcon Logue um, says um, everybody belongs in a dungeon. Um, <laughs> so that's his contribution <laughs> to that conversation. Uh, Matt Dillon oh. says um, he doesn't know how that's you guys write more than one thing at a time. I don't either. Honestly, I'm like, yeah. you guys can write multiple things at one time. It's, it's taking me like six months to write this like next book. Uh, like, oh, there's definitely definitely di- different skill levels here. Eh, it's it's more just how much time you can get and how much you can fit in that amount of time. So it's, I mean, you are doing various things and all I do is write heavily, you know? And so it's, it's like, I'm, I'm not doing podcasts. I'm not doing all this other stuff. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah, did you review like a million books a week? Like you read more books in a week than I feel <laughs> like I read in a year. Like right. that's an impressive skill set too. Mm-hmm. It and is. it's like a major, a major like uh, contribution for the community. So I mean, it's we're thankful and it's impressive. Uh, thank you very much. I, I wish that it would pay the bills. Uh, it kind of pays for itself, <laughs> but it definitely does um, something that I love doing. So that's why I do that. But I always envy your guys' ability to like write um, more than three novels a year. <laughs> um, if, it, if it if it helps at all, one of the things that really helped me. I, I didn't used to be an outliner, and now I'm like a super uber outliner. Like when I like when I start a story, it's there's already like fifteen thousand words of outline done. Like every chapter and every scene has been outlined. So like when it's time for me to write, it's like okay, what what am I writing today? It's like oh, this exact scene that I already have, and then the developmental edits are like so much less because the whole story has already been told. I already have all the plot twists, and I know all the character arcs and stuff. So then I just like power through it. And then when I get tired of one book, I just switch over and I do the next one. And I'm like, all right, well, I guess I'm on to this scene in this book. And then I do that. So um, yeah, that's, that, that's kind of, doesn't that ever like, 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 like the, doesn't that ruin like the discovery part of writing? Like when you're like, you know, what's coming in so much detail, isn't it like ruin like, Oh, the surprise of like that creativity for, for me. No. Like, like whenever I talk to people and they're like, Oh, like they talk, talk about a movie that I haven't seen. They're like, I have to give you spoilers. And I'm like, I love the spoilers. Like, I don't like, like the discovery is not the exciting part. Like the exciting part for me is like seeing how a book hangs together. Like sure. seeing like, oh man, they set up the end right here in chapter four. And oh, here's the, the special skill that they're going to pull out in chapter six. And they're going to use it to, to defeat the big bad in chapter 28. Like I love looking at a book as a whole or a movie as a whole and like figuring out all of the things that they do and how it works as a whole. So it, for me, that's the exciting part, not the discovery. Okay. Gotcha. That's, that, that makes cool. sense to me, I guess. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Dave Wilmarth in chat room is asking James Hunter specifically, um, are you wearing pants? Cause you are. Yeah, unfortunately, pants. unfortunately, yes, because <laughs> I just had date night with my wife, which is like my once a week excursion out into the real world. So I rushed home and I still had <laughs> pants on. Uh, but this is atypical. Good for you. <laughs> As it should be for a, for a full time author, right? I don't know if I feel more comfortable with that knowledge or less comfortable with that knowledge. But, um, Much more comfortable. I think uh, Matt, um, this is, this is Michael This is why Dakota's sitting on the floor. He's like, oh, yep. <laughs> let, I'm sitting let here. The I got my on my couch. Ah, good stuff. You're making me envision weird things, Chatfield. There's a lot of weirdness <laughs> going on, and I'm not comfortable with it. Just sitting here wearing a kilt. It's all good. <laughs> Don't worry about it. <laughs> Just accept it. Just accept it. <laughs> Win some, lose some. Yep. Um, so, uh, oh, actually, you know, that that made me think like uh, you were talking about odd stuff and how like it can work really well. Um, I don't know if you guys uh, read the book Dominion of Blades recently. So second book in that came out. It was really good. Um, they did some uh, like uh, tower defense. And mm. I, I had thought about writing tower defense, and but it was a really kind of a... Eh, thing because it's it's hard to right. do 
that kind of hard to conceptualize that in on paper and get what you're trying to say across really well but i think that uh, uh that did it really well so if you're looking for something like that um and and i was gonna say that before i even saw that matt or uh, that uh Dinaman was on here so it's, I think it's Matt. Yeah, no, I'm always excited yeah, when, yeah. when somebody tries to do something new and they pull some yeah. other gaming kind of thing, just like regular fantasy uh, MMO stuff. Not that I'm, I'm tired of it, but it's always nice to see like other concepts come in and, and, and be pulled to another. Because there's so many other games. There's so many RPG mm-hmm. mechanics systems in the world. I'm always like surprised that everyone just kind of pulls from the same idea pool. Like, right. Oh. Yeah. Like, the, I think one of the, the best things, like, um, as James said, with like uh, where you, you find something and then you go through at the end of it, um, it it's like um, it, when you see the systems that people could come up with, like Dakota's like uh, Divine Dungeon series, which had like basically like a uh, Chinese cultivation system and then also like fantasy, uh, like uh, Western fantasy adventure style. And it was like the mashing of those two together. And I was just like, um, <laughs> I'm glad. <laughs> like, I when, that. <laughs> like, when you see like the the different systems that, that can be made up, because like the, the, the game systems, like we we have um like <clears throat> sorry, excuse me, um like with tower defense, with um VR MMO RPG, we with uh, like when uh, your body's been destroyed and you're uploaded into the the, the system, like with a uh, Viridian Gate. Oh, it's just like the, those abilities to not only um change how the mechanics work but the situations because sometimes you'll just get like the first like five pages in and you'll be like all right this this is going to be interesting for like different factors like it might be the, the character you really like you might be like this system could be amazing like the the ideas and the, the expansion of it because like who doesn't go into a video game and says I'm going to be God by the end of this. Like you're going to be running around and you could be like slapping people with a pinky finger and you're like, goodbye. And it's just a boom. <laughs> and it's uh, like, it is just like the, the fun and conceptual, like, like where can you go and the struggle to get there? And then it's also kind of interesting how, like um, I always found it interesting at least when, when you like get to the end of a game in say like a, mm-hmm. uh, say like Skyrim or a uh, Fallout or like a MMORPG, like WoW and such. Um, when you get to the end of it, like there's still small things to do, but usually once you've done it, unless you're going for a hundred percent completionist, then you're just like, um, okay, I'm yeah, good. Just someone like, else's novel, but okay. <laughs> yeah, but like you're just good with like seeing how you could be in that world. Cause you've got like, all the fire spells of the world and you're just running around just being like, fireball, 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 fireball. <laughs> and it's just like, hey, you like in the beginning of the game, you guys have got me so good. And then now you're just like, teabag. Um, and then <laughs> just good fun like that. But that's, I find that's really cool to like play around with and see. Yeah, good stuff. Yeah, uh, all, kinds of, all kinds of great stuff we can pull from um, for our stories and individual stuff. Um, let's see a couple of questions from the chat room. Let's see. Um, Falcon says it's true. Ramon is a gutlin here in a good way. Uh, Attack of the Ramones. Um, and Demon says he's convinced there are four Ramones. Uh, let's see. And uh, Dave Wilmar says it looks like Chatfield's in some executive lounge somewhere. He's waiting for the scantily clad waitresses to come around and card him and see if he should be there because yeah. he looks too young. Boy child. <laughs> No, I'm I'm in an office right now. I'm, I think I'm the only one here. Well, there were a couple people uh, walking. No, oh, no, no, they're waving some, behind you. Waving. Yeah. <laughs> leaving in a sec. That's fine. There's only three thousand people watching you. Yep. <laughs> they said are there really that many people? Because if there are, I, I'm glad that I did say the thing I was going to say not too long ago. We keep that in a wrap. There's like 17 people watching us currently, but you know, it's a, it's a nice thought. Eventually, there will be. 3, Give it time. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, I'll watch it. Yeah. 2200 some odd times so you guys just need to fill that 800 <laughs> yeah, yeah he was he was close he was close uh so there you go uh so who's next oh we haven't talked about dakota dakota what are you working on man oh yeah oh uh, a couple of cool things um so obviously you know um next one in the completionist chronicles i actually have that nearly done um and i gotta tell you uh full-time authorship has been really good for that because you know the military in me says hey this isn't finished yet so finish it 
So um, I had a week be between after I was done with work and before I started um, uh, also doing the you know the dad thing and having uh, my baby here, um, where I, I wrote for ten hours a day for five days and I wrote like. Uh, thirty percent of the next book, so I, I'm I'm right at about where I call eighty five percent. So I'm uh, thinking that's going to be done pretty quick. Oh, good. Because um, I was I was worried when you said, "Oh, I wrote for ten hours for ten days," like, and I wrote a hundred words. I was like, "Oh." <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I I was a coffee fueled maniac that week, dude. Um, you know, I go from four like four a.m. onward. That's my usual day. So, um. And uh, so the second one in the uh, Completionist Chronicles is going to be coming out. I haven't decided on a name for it yet. Um, just because I'm trying to find that one defining crystallizing thing that, you know, catches my attention. Murder machine. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then following that, uh, before people panic too much, um, there will be uh, the fourth Divine Dungeon series is going to be coming after that. Um, followed by the third in the completionist chronicles but then i have a, i have 12 series total that i have outlined right now so we'll, we'll see what um <laughs> we'll see how that goes uh yeah dude you're, how, how's it gonna go you're gonna kill it that's how it's gonna go man you're, you're <laughs> yeah doing a damn thing good for you man that's the that's the way to get it done yeah thanks, thanks and then there's uh, some hopeful collaboration with a couple authors that i'm really excited about Cool, Fernando. Before yeah, so. we go on, I want to introduce uh, Chris Carney, who okay. is joining us, and then he disappeared. Uh, oh, there he is. Yeah, and he's back. Hey, everybody hey. said Chris hey, Carney. Guys. Hey, Chris. Cool. Well, everybody hey, here? Hey. Um, so, I, I mean, I'm not, I don't want to kick you guys off uh, at all. So, I mean, feel free to stay on. Um, but, uh, yeah, so we're going to move into the next segment. So, this is um, a couple more guys here. So, it looks like we have uh, Dave Wilmar. Uh, uh, Jeffrey Falcon Logue and Chris Carney. Yeah, so. and I'll hey guys. we're more hey than guys. Up introduce everybody. We have uh, uh, Chris Carney who let me pull up his information so everybody can see all of his great stuff. Okay, well, let me will... let me just hop off real quick. I don't sure. want to. I don't. Oh, hey, you know, oh, all okay, these well, fine people. I want to be able to talk. So thank you guys oh, hey. for having me around. Oh, James, go ahead. Hello, James. Chad, James and Chadfield. You know, guys, thank you so much for getting on here and. Uh, you know, thanks for your donations and donations of your time. And this is uh, hopefully going to be awesome for St. Jude's. Um, and it looks like we have so far um, raised ten dollars. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll uh, we'll see how those bids go. Um, let's, this is, oh, this no, is no, my this is my daughter Lucy. I'm going to go hug her and help bye. tuck her into bed. Can you say hi to everybody? Bye. Bye. All right, guys. Bye. 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 Um, <laughs> well, I'll see you guys later. Have a good one, and I'll be watching the stream. Um, but yeah, uh, see you, Michael. Sounds great, Have man. Have a good one, guys. Thank you. Thanks for coming in. All right. um, okay, cool. So Perfect. let's see. Who do we have? And here? we're gonna go talk with. Um, a number of other folks here, including uh, we have Dave <laughs> Wilmarth, we have Jeffrey Falcon Logue, and we have uh, Chris Carney. Uh, Chris Carney, Dave, is, put on your fake mustache. Sam Carney is the author of the Borrow King um, and Killing Time that series. We have uh, Jeffrey Falcon Logan, who's the author of the Slime Dungeon Chronicles and also the Hero of Not uh, series. And we have Dave Wilmarth, who's the author of the Land of the Undying series, uh, which just has one book so far, and I'm hoping to read book two and three very soon, but also the Greystone Chronicles. So everybody, welcome to the stream, and everybody. Ooh. Thanks, Ron. Hey. Yeah, thanks for having us. Thanks, guys. Thanks for coming on. And, and once again, uh, you know, thanks for your donations uh, to this event and, um, you know, your willingness to participate in this. So, uh, again, it's a charity for St. Jude's Children's Hospital to help with uh, research uh, for, you know, uh, diseases and for the care of those people that have diseases. So, um, so yeah, so now let's, let's get to the fun part. And, um, you know, I'm sure there's links all over the place right now for you to go. The auction lasts for uh, another week after this. I think it ends next Saturday at midnight. So, um, great. On to the fun stuff. Hi, guys. How's it going? Yeah, no, <laughs> what's going on? Good. That's going really well. It's really good to see you all. I, and it's just, it's super awesome for me because I get to see all these authors that I only, you know, normally see via texting, you know, like, or messaging. So, um, it's really great to actually talk to you, like, well, 
face to face. Face to face. I'm counting here. Looks like we have uh, two beards, two, three non beards. Uh, so looks no, like the no, non no, beards. No, 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 Dave has a beard. The non beards are looking. He has a beard with him. If Dave can <laughs> like Dave unattach his on beard, on I don't think thing. it actually counts unless you're on like some other podcast. Yeah. So. No. Some other like podcast. a week's growth for me. Oh. Not really. Maybe four days. <laughs> <laughs> Forty. See, I, I had a shave today. I'm like, oh, because otherwise that looks so weird in the stream with like a little scraggly hairs of like like patchiness everywhere. I'm like, oh, yeah, can't really oh, do it. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I, just, I didn't mean to interrupt you there. I just wanted to mention that we jumped from ten dollars to eighty five dollars. Right. Oh, see, there you go. Yeah. So I, I, I think it was. I think it was uh, Dave. I'm pretty sure he got on and. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought you meant like you're like, oh, Dave, take the money, take the money, take the money. I thought you meant like you gave Dave like seventy five bucks. Like, here, Dave, just just do it, Dave. Just bid somewhere. I don't care where. So we have. Uh, I promise. I promise sexual favors. So you know. Uh, okay. Hey, look, whatever it, for the kids. Remember, it's always for, <laughs> for the, the children. Please not take for the children in that case. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, let's start off with some basic questions about from each of the new authors here. What are you working on? Um, anything you want to talk about and like discuss and promote? Feel free to do so. We'll start off with uh, uh, Chris Carney. Hey Am guys, uh, right, man? I'm relatively new to the genre. Okay. Uh, I spent about five years working on maybe six different novels for six different series and they never seem to work out and then uh this one just fell into place really quickly so uh published barrel king first one in the realms uh end of february and then uh was supposed to write a short maybe ten thousand word reader magnet giveaway that ended up being forty five thousand words because i couldn't shut up uh so i ended up publishing that as 1.5 it's kind of a contemporary side story that answers a question about that basically was not answered in Barrow King. Uh, about halfway through The Lost City, which is the sequel to Barrow King, um, it has also grown larger than it was supposed to be. Is is that the artwork that I've been seeing recently? The artwork? The, uh, that up? Yeah, the one that's kind of got the keyhole uh, looking at, well, I won't tell anybody, but it's a dwarven city. Ah, okay. Well, uh, some notes in YouTube for you. Uh, first thing that came up as soon as you started talking was Barrow King was really good. So thank you, Emily. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Thanks, Emily. <laughs> yeah, hopefully mid-June on uh, Lost City. Well, we'll see. Uh, like I said, my outlines I thought were pretty on point for the amount of time I was going to do it, but each chapter seems to be getting longer and longer. So we'll see. Isn't that well, the fun of it, though? It, actually, yeah. That's, yeah. I mean, I, I do... I came from a screenwriting background, so mm-hmm. outlines have always been part of my process. Sure. Uh, but I like the novel method better because it always seems to grow. Mm-hmm. Like it doesn't just, it's not static. I'll, like, there were several characters in Barrow King that were not in my outline. And one, I got an email saying, I love this character, write more Simon. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, I just made him up kind of off the cuff. So, okay, sure. <laughs> Uh, isn't that nice that when someone sends you mention is that oh I love yeah. your work and I love this particular character please write some more yeah. so I can give you my monies and exactly. you continue working it's always fun so yeah the danger is I have a side story for that character I'm like no 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 we need to focus <laughs> on the main novels oh then you have like seven side stories and like you're only in your second book of your main story yeah, exactly. <laughs> people are like dude where the hell is book two it's like a three part trilogy prequel <laughs> <laughs> there we go do book three <laughs> do you like that and there's game universe oh. thing where he writes like 17 different versions of the same story. Yeah. But it, he, he no, did it, it successfully. So. That's yeah, true. It was good. It was, yeah, it was really good. Yeah, perfect. I remember that. When I was a kid, Let's so. go on to another author. Um, Dave, what are you working on, man? Oh, uh, I am about to release Greystone 4. Comes out in uh, a little less than two weeks. Woo! So that's, I yeah, just got it back from. From the lovely and talented Jay Taylor and his guys doing the editing, and uh, going to spend the weekend going through it, but it'll be out. Um, I'm also trying to write Dark Elf Two. I got it's been a real busy couple weeks on the day job, so Dark Elf Two is a little behind. But, uh, I mean the land of Dark Elf Two, the land of the undying. Yeah, <laughs> so that one's underway, um, and uh, you know, hopefully, I'll have that done end of the end of next month and, and have it off to editing for a release about a month later. But, awesome. um, it's, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not like those other guys who were talking before about, uh, writing three and four books at a time. 
<laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm always kind of jealous when they say that. I'm like, oh, good for you guys. I'm going to go finish Michael or this special. novel. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. And in the chat room, we have a comment from Don Purple, who I thought was Falcon for a minute. Um, but he's, <laughs> they say, I heard Dave will dance for donations. Um, is that true, Dave? Uh, it's absolutely not. <laughs> Dave, Dave, mean, has a, yeah. Dave has a day job at a company that monitors social media, so if he wants to keep his job, he will not be dancing on the internet. <laughs> that, that sounds kind of odd, considering some of the things I've heard you say on like recorded YouTube videos. Yeah. But okay. Yes. That's, I, well, there was drinking involved, and I'm <laughs> dead sober now. So. Get that man a drink. <laughs> Dave, you're going to be at uh, so, Dragon yeah, Con this year. I am going to be Dragon Con adjacent. I don't, I don't do cons. I don't do crowds. I am going to set up in a nearby tavern and just get people drunk as they come by and visit. Well, make sure to tell me where that tavern is. That's fair. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Everybody's yeah. invited. Well, I'll be happy to join you there. It looks like Jacob Taylor in chat room says he <laughs> loves both <laughs> Greystone and the Darfo Chronicles. Uh, so it looks like you have some fans in chat room, Dave. So yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. You also, like have, you also have fans in your in the stream too, so yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> oh, there's Jay Taylor. Hey, Taylor. Or Jacob Taylor. So perfect. I don't know. And uh, let's Jay move Taylor. on to Falcon. Um, Falcon, what are you working on, man? Well, I got three things really going on at the moment. I got my cover art for the better version of Hero of Not, which I'll be re-releasing <laughs> this weekend. Ooh. And uh, then I'm going to be writing this sequel to that, and that should be out July, August. And I also have gotten halfway through Slime Dungeon Book 5. But then I was like, you know, I'm not feeling it anymore, so I'm just going to let that wait a little while. Maybe Not, get not feeling the slime. Thoughts. Got it. Uh, and then finally, uh, working on the short, short story for Fiora, the character in my book. I have the cover art, and I'm, you know, almost halfway through, but eh, I had to go through some fun finals, which I had to write a couple of 20-page essays, so I was just burned out of writing. Now, you're also working on a secret super awesome project, which you were showing out. Do you want to talk about that at all? The uh... Sure. Okay, probably good. Uh, dec- I decided in the same way when I was jumping in the books that, hey, I want to make a video game. So I'm make in January. I started working on a video game project uh, based around the slimes and their evolution mechanics. And I was hoping to have a demo done by Dragon Con this year, and it looks like that's going to be way, way more time than I actually needed to give to it. But so it's coming along really well, and I hope to get a Kickstarter out at the end of the summer. Perfect. Now, if you want to pull up, like, a, do you want to pull up a screenshot of some of the stuff you're working on there? Because I yeah, think it's sure. pretty cool. First, like, because I, 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 got, I, I, I was, got, yeah, I was so excited when I heard about this. Uh, I, I've been following the project on YouTube. Like, uh, um, Falcon puts up like YouTube clips of like the work he's doing, and it's like this little pink uh, purple blob side scrolling across, like jumping over things. Like, there's cool music, and it's it's very <laughs> yeah, like you very know eight cool. bit kind of looking, but it, it's, it's also super stable. Like, oh, this? he's doing the things that all of the little bit authors are really doing, is like making video games. He's just actually doing it and realizing, <laughs> oh, this is a lot, a lot of work. And I'm like, yeah. but it's still super fun for me to like see work to see it happen. Yeah. Can so, you uh, can you focus on Falcon's screen? He's got it up now. Yeah, yeah, it's go. on now. So let's see. That this is an older version, but this is how where I test all the code. This is the first mini boss. I finally got him working today. And he's throwing rocks through walls. I, th- yes. I think there's a clipping he issue. He backs but... away when you get closer, but yeah. if you get too close, then he charges you and tries to attack. I that don't actually your... have the slime working for health yet, but it works enough to give him what you expect for it. Does your slime have different attacks that he can use? Or is it just uh, moving around so far? He, he'll have just the one attack. And then as you evolve, he'll gain new attacks, new abilities. I'm thinking some along the lines of uh, 21 various abilities you can gain through evolution. Not at the same time, mind you. You know, fire <laughs> slime can't become an ice slime. But... <laughs> You know, you'll be able to play the game and beat it no matter which evolution pathway you go through. 
I'll just okay. close out of here for the moment. That definitely looks fun. I'm gonna have to say I'm, I'm kind of jealous that you're taking the time to to do that kind of stuff. I'm like, oh, that's that's super fun looking to me at least. Like I I almost wish I wanted to take more time to do it, but like, oh wait, I don't have time left. <laughs> no, no, no. We we got to give up everybody a fair share to sell their books for charity. Yeah, yes, absolutely. So perfect. So that the thing that touched bases on everybody and what they're working on right now. Except for um, you. Me? Oh, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm here all night, so I have all night to talk about my own stuff <laughs> uh, along with you. So we'll... Like, yeah, to the we'll, beginning, and then we got to wait till later to get the rest. Yeah, yeah. I'm on yeah, here all night. the best for last. Yeah, there you go. Well, there's some good-looking books behind you, Ramon. Yeah, yeah. Some some nice guys were happy enough to, oh, yeah. nice enough to send me some stuff. Out, they're uh, like, here's a free copy of a thing. And they're like, if you want to show it on the podcast, that's totally cool. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, but it, I mean, we have all, I have my stuff there. I have um, the Walmarts. And of course, I have Dakota Crowd's Ritualist there. And I get a stack of his other books. Like, uh, Dakota's always nice enough to send me um, hard copy or like a, you know, paperback copies of, of all his things. So it's always nice to have. <laughs> it's always nice to know that you want them. <laughs> you know, yeah, like, I, know. I love um, them. Yeah, um, I, I'm never sure. Like, I, I'm never sure. Otherwise, like, there's a lot of authors that I'd be like, yeah, man, here, you know, um, you know. I, I tried when I was first getting going to do a author book exchange, mm-hmm. and a couple people were on board, but a lot of people were like, we don't know who you are, and we just think you're trying to steal our books. <laughs> 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 so uh, maybe I'll try that again somewhere down the road. But uh, yeah, I mean, there's, I mean, I would love to have a wall of just signed copies of books. You know, like that's something that would just be awesome to me currently i have you know I, i've got adventures on terra that's not my own and i think um i have a couple of aileron stuff upstairs um uh i think he sent me the first book in his the land series but i think he sent it to me twice so i have the same book <laughs> twice um but i mean it's super awesome of him to do that so that was really nice so yeah um let's see oh he i think he also donated to the to the thing yeah he did great so uh yeah so um if, if you're a big fan of the land series there's uh that's part of the bundle tonight we have a lot so, of different authors in there actually I think of like, a lot like, of different authors yeah like like tons and tons of like different people were just like yeah I'll, I'll send you some stuff for charity good job right and like oh yeah that was yeah. super awesome you know yeah. it's and, and that's the coolest thing like uh with this group you know this it's all the authors i gotta say are really like genuinely good people like not i mean not everyone has the same personality type not everyone has the same you know not everyone gets along all the time always but i would say that by and large we're gen- like genuinely decent people which is really nice yeah like in the yeah. um in the game lit letter pg section it's yeah. travis bagwell cm carney michael tadfield jay cipriano uh harman cooper blaze corbin matt Dinneman, j.a hunter and aaron crash Aaron kong dakota kraut r mejia michael scott earl and Dave Woolmarth. So that's just in like that one little bundle. And we have, of course, we have a whole fi- uh, science fiction and fantasy section who has more authors, including uh, Jason Asnach and Nicole, Steve uh, Ballou and Aaron Hall, uh, Jay Cipriano, DK Holmberg, James A. Hunter, uh, Anitha Sharp. Um, and those are just a few different people. We also have like other box sets, like the Divine Dungeon series. We have the uh, the Dungeon of uh, the Graystone Chronicles. Um you know, the circuit sign box and some other folks like Viridian Gate, Slime Dungeon, um, the Yancey Lazarus series, the Paulden sign book. So plenty of things for people to bid on from a lot of really like great authors. Yeah, and, and extra, an extra thanks to James Hunter. Cause he just, he's like, Hey, take one of everything basically. So that was really nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, and again, one more time, a uh, really special thanks to Danielle who set all of this up. Um, she did a lot of work and she gave up a lot of sleep to make this happen. So. Yep. And she's yeah, totally based listening in chat. Right? Yeah. Thanks. Based, based on her comment in chat just now, you can build yourself a wall of signed copies, but you ain't keeping it. No. <laughs> she's going to claim it. <laughs> <laughs> and it looks like we have a question uh, from chat. Um, Mike C. I'm thinking that's maybe Mike Chatfield. I don't know. Uh, but he says, crafting or fighting, what do you like the most? So um, question for everybody, I assume. We'll start off with uh, Chris Carney. Uh, so far, my, mine has mostly been fighting. I love crafting books, though. So uh, book two of the realms is still kind of in the fighting, getting his bearings uh, Book three is going to get a lot more into um, crafting and city building and all that kind of stuff. Um, so maybe both, but I've 
kind of leaning towards <laughs> crafting a little bit more lately. I'm pretty, I find it fascinating. I was probably a little late coming to that particular part of the genre, so I find it to be, I don't know, it's, it's apart from, you know, making 8 million Iron Daggers in Skyrim. <laughs> that was my favorite part about Skyrim and, like, Fallout is the figuring out ways to build crap, so... Yeah, perfect. that's, that's, that's going to be coming down the pipe in my stuff. So. That's a good answer. Uh, Dakota, uh, fighting or crafting, which one do you like more? <laughs> well, I, I typically craft two fights. Um, I, uh, it's, it's difficult. So, cause I, I love them both, you know, like I am all about the, the minutia of making sense. Like, why does like I want to say I have this weapon, but I don't just want to be like, hey, here's an overpowered weapon. I want to be like, here's why I have an overpowered weapon. Here's how I did it, and here's what it took to get it. Um, I just I didn't walk into a, a lake and have a uh, random woman handing out swords, you know. Sounds <laughs> <laughs> like a lawsuit <laughs> waiting to happen. <laughs> um, but my response on there was so the question was crafting or fighting what do you like the most my response on the YouTube thing was killing my foes and forging weapons from their bodies on the field of battle so we'll that see. was definitely his actual <laughs> answer he, wrote, he, he took the time to write it out while we were talking yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see if I can incorporate that in any books Perfect. Uh, Dave <laughs> what about you man crafting or fighting which do you like most I love to write the fight scenes. I love fight mm-hmm. scenes. I, I, I like to try to find different ways to, to attack and defend and, and different twists on, on attacks. But I'm also, in real life, I build stuff. So I spend a lot of time on town building and, and crafting in, in my books as well. So I'm, I'm pretty balanced, I think, between the two. But my preference is definitely the fights, man. I love the fights. I reenact my old... Uh, raids with my guild and, and all this crazy stuff we did and, and you know sort of the throwing people in the fire and doing just fun stuff to make the fights more interesting so i like to write the fights yeah you sound like a seasoned veteran all of a sudden in, in gaming world yeah well man I, i've been gaming since there were games but i i've i, I played a lot of years in, in elder scrolls and wow and star wars and and uh, Elder Scrolls is mostly a, a solo game for me. I, mean, I have a guild there, but we don't don't really play much. But I have a solid guild that jumps from game to game as we as we max out one, we jump over to the other, and we've been playing together for close to ten years, I guess. Wow. Well, good. That, that's good that you have a nice solid group together there. Yeah, um, let's go on to Falcon. Falcon, what would you choose, man? Um, crafting or fighting? Which one do you like most? I personally love making things with my hands. I just, you know, I, I wood carve, I write books. <clears throat> but when it comes to writing, it's a lot easier and more entertaining to write out the fight scenes for me. Uh, especially, you know, in, in my stories, I just love the boss battles. Mm. You know, a, a good boss battle will hold you through, in whether it's in game or in book. Perfect. And, and we saw your boss, your mini boss there. So it definitely goes in line like, oh, you you enjoy your fights for your games as well as your box. A um, few notes from chat. We have um, Joshua Rivera says, I love your books, Dakota. I just bid, uh, bid on them. So oh, that's nice. Uh, Dakota also said, thank you, Joshua. So apparently he saw the message and he responded. <laughs> He's really on, on top of chat. Uh, he said he'd, he'd do higher bids, but he, he he can't do he can't afford so much. Uh, Jacob Teller says Smith Dagger and Chant Dagger sell and repeat. Mm-hmm. That that's my strategy for, for for a lot of single player video games when I need need to raise cash. Um, Mike C says them saucy sword maidens. Um, GL Rathrix says crafting, no fighting, no crafting, great taste, less filling. Um, <laughs> so there you go. And Josh Rivera says Dakota does Cal ever find out who turned him into a gem? So that one's specifically for Dakota. Yes, at the end of, uh, at the end of Calamity, so at the end of the third book, um, and I, there will be more information coming on that in the fourth book because um, it was a bit of a confusing ending to the book. I'm not gonna lie, um, made sense perfectly to me in my head, and on paper, uh, a I got few it. People did get confused. Yeah, yeah, it made but, sense uh, to me. But I mean, you can always you can always come over to my Facebook page and ask me questions. So, perfect. Um, Oh, my turn. Oh, I forgot. Um, Ramon, crafting or fighting? Which one do you like most? Oh, well, thanks for asking. Um, 
For me, definitely crafting. I love fighting. I mean, I love writing my fight scenes and I love like reading about good fight scenes and novels, but crafting is always going to have like my heart. Um, like I, in, in whether it's Skyrim or Fallout or any other like MMO or whatever, um, crafting is always like the first thing that I do all the time. Like, and I, I could legitimately spend, you know, hours and hours, hours just gathering materials, trying out new, new formulas or spells or, or blueprints or whatever. And just like trying to figure out how the best way to maximize things. And, and I, I think that it comes out pretty easily in my novels too because i'll write um i'm editing a uh, vegetarian books right now and one of like regular comments from like the editors that I, i'm working with they're like oh your crafting things are super detailed man and they're like super long and, and and then they're like but your dialogue is like almost missing from some of these other scenes like you should really like put more dialogue in this scene like as much, at least as much as you have the, for the crafting so i'm like oh yeah I, I guess that's true it's easier for me to write about doing stuff than it is like the talky talk to so uh there you go uh next question from chat guild or solo player um so again we'll start off with chris uh absolutely solo player i've probably one of those people who might be excommunicated for being this but i'm not a big mmo guy um i played a bit of wow uh, but the first time i got into mmos which and it sort of turned me off was EverQuest. No, was it EverQuest? <laughs> oh yeah uh, well that's and i got in and i wandered around and it was like this village square with 8 billion people and <laughs> some dude came up to me and started talking in like, I don't know, old English or something. And I said like, you know, sub guy, whatever. And he yelled at me for not being a character. And I was like, uh, okay, we, this is not really working. We want to be role playing server, roles. man. Cause those are the rules when you go into those. Yeah. Like, I, this is what we did. I was completely new to that one. I didn't know what the hell I was doing. So he was like, what's an RP server? Before I did anything else. Uh, and I'd say mostly elder scrolls and, Fallout's my wheelhouse. Um, I do play other stuff here and there, but I keep getting uh, suckered into that uh, Elder Scrolls Six trick video with the Rick Astley. I don't know if you've <laughs> seen that. It's like, oh, new Valenwood. Oh, crap, it's Rick Astley. Nah, nah, you're getting Rage 2. What was it? You're getting Rage 2 from Bethesda. Oh, yeah, yeah that, they just announced that. Um, that, that. I saw some of the videos. So I'm like, mm, Rage 1 wasn't all that awesome. I'm not that excited. <laughs> Uh, so there you go. So next up is Dakota. Um, solo player or guild man? I would love to play guild, but the issue is that I am sure, as with many of us, that we have about 30 seconds of time in which we want to use to sleep. Um, so uh, finding time to play with a guild and actually like run you know, raids and stuff is really hard. Like I would love to be able to do it. I would love to have the kind of free time that would let me do it. But because I don't, it almost exclusively ends up like solo player well i've seen you do some stuff with um like charles dean and travis backwell Mm -hmm. what what game is that um oh that is uh, yeah vermintide uh but that's because those are uh that's you know when you get into an mmo though it's like a 300 hour commitment basically if you want to be decent at the game and if you uh, like vermintide it's more like hey 40 minutes and then i can you know call that my gaming for the day basically (laughs) Ooh, you have um, gaming sections for your day, huh? Well, it's it's more actually heck, man. It's half the time it's more like, hey, this is a group of authors online that we should all we're all like talking shop and stuff. Um, but uh, yeah, actually, I haven't played in a little while. I actually haven't played uh, that since I went full time author. But uh, I, I was like, I was like, that gaming headset does not look new. That that looks like a well worn <laughs> gaming headset. <laughs> Professional. But, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. the high end one. That's not the cheapy. <laughs> Don't know what you're talking about. Danielle's <laughs> Okay, perfect. Uh, thanks for that answer. We'll go with uh, Dave Walmart, who hopefully has uh, n- doesn't have a wife looking over his shoulder. Uh, so Dave, no, solo player or I guild mean, man? I am absolutely a guild guy, although I haven't played at all. I haven't even logged in since I started writing. I just haven't had the time. And the only reason my guildies still talk to me is because I – Send them my books to beta read, and they have to. Oh, they have to be like, oh, because I owe them money. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, no, I I uh, haven't gamed it. In fact, I, I passed up on the WoW beta. I got an invite last month, and and didn't oh, even for the didn't new expansion. Yeah, 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 yeah. On the new expansion, and uh, that's that's the first time ever since the beginning of WoW that I didn't play the beta, and I'm, I'm a little disappointed in myself, but I got stuff to do. So yeah, you got books to write. You got a whole real job. Um, that yeah. expects you to do stuff. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. You have to. You have to adult professionally. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> adulting sucks. 
<laughs> it does until you get to like full time author level, and then it's like, oh, this is not bad anymore. It's busy, but I work for myself. So yeah, I gotta say, man, I as much as I loved my most previous job and they were awesome, um, I I work much much harder. You know, because it's more like, you know, I would really like to keep my house. Uh, <laughs> you know, that's a big thing for me, you know, like having food in the house, you know. Um, but, uh, yeah, and I I mean, I get up at 4 a.m. and I write until 8 a.m. And that's when my wife goes off to work and then I'm watching baby. Anytime baby closes her eyes for more than five seconds, I'm at the computer just, you know, just typing away. And, yeah, so... Anyway. So there you go. And real quick, one more time. Uh, Falcon, uh, solo or guild man? Uh, solo. I was... I've, I didn't get into the whole multiplayer type of game until I entered college. And then, of course, once I got into it, the first thing I played was LOL. So, of course, it was like, hey, look, newbie, college student, let's get into some addictive online multiplayer gameplay. So that was fun, and that's why I'm no longer a computer science major. <laughs> okay, perfect. Thank you very much, man. I appreciate you all your answers. Uh, looks like we had Steve Blue on for a second, and now he's gone, so maybe he'll come back. Uh, he uh, said his video isn't working. Oh, that's yeah. Okay. Might be him. Okay, well, I had I just, man, I had just his last, I was so on top of things for once. I was like, <laughs> I had his picture queued up. I was like, oh, I'm ready for the go to introduce him, and then he disappears on me. That's up with that, man. Okay, yeah. looks like we have a couple more questions from the audience. If you guys want to answer some more, um, plenty of great comments. Um, Don Purple says she lo- they love the ending of what? I don't know. I'm going to assume <laughs> all of our books that they, they love yeah, all of go. our stuff. That's the an- that's the perfect answer. So thank you, Don Purple. We um, must talk to Dakota. And then and Dakota says thank you, Don. So he he knew he thinks in advance that it's just him, but well, we're all here, the, and that comment that was up, not specified. We were talking about the end of my book, and I assumed. <laughs> It was not specified for anybody in particular, so I'm going to assume <laughs> they like us all. That's well, my hope. That's probably accurate, yes. Yeah. Um, and we have Steve. Hey, guys. Hey, there you go. Hey. Yeah, Steve. Look at beard. Sorry about that. Welcome to the stream, Steve. I'm going to say Baloo. Is that it? <laughs> Bowyer. Oh, man. Dakota oh, scared man. me wrong. He was I so really wrong. Drew, he I told really me how to say it, too. He was like, that, he's like, oh, it's like that bear, Baloo. And I'm like, yeah. like those are a I, lot I of extra like, letters in man. Yes, you blue. sure? And he's like, yeah, yeah, I know. That's what I only call him. Just, no. just say it. That yeah. French stuff, man. I just call him Steve, typically. Yeah, you know? like, <laughs> As a matter of fact, I'm, I'm kind of just Jamie Castle now, which uh, makes it a whole lot easier. Oh, is there that one of the uh, the pen names you use, or is that like yeah. the... Yeah, okay. Well, I don't know what I'm doing yet. <laughs> I, I, I hope one day to know what I'm doing, too. That's what I use for the Bear Goddess Saga, yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, hey Ramon, sorry to disappoint, but Don Purple clarified it was all for Dakota. Uh, Yay! I mean, well, oh, I mean I <laughs> I'm still gonna hope that um, that 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 they meant us all in in spirit, if not in technicality. Um, <laughs> there you go. We'll go on a question. Welcome, Steve, back. to the to the podcast or to the to the show, and for donating everything to charity as we do. Uh, Rhett, um, uh, hey man, how you I doing? gotta go. If Rhett's here, I gotta go. Is that what? Every interview I do, he's on. <laughs> uh, I'll see you guys later. I got to knock out some fun summer work. So. Okay. <laughs> uh, see you, man. Falcon. Thanks for thanks for coming thanks, on, Falcon. man. And it was super thanks, nice thanks. to meet you. You both face to face, Chris and um, Dave. Yeah. You know, and, uh, thanks, look Dakota, for putting this all together. Oh, absolutely, man. And, uh, and I really look forward to talking to you guys more. Awesome. Yeah. We'll talk soon. All right, great. Guys, Thanks so much. thank you. And, and before I go, I just want to say everybody spent a lot of money on these items. It's for a good cause to help the kids. And uh, everybody, have a good night. Sounds good. You as well. See you All right, guys. Guys. Thanks, man. All, All right. right. Cool. And, like so, and, and then there were four. Uh, oh, man. Everyone yeah. left, man. <laughs> so well, we, we have it set up in sections. It's not yeah, like everybody gets a shot. Uh, <laughs> and so we have two new guests to this particular stream here. We have uh, Steve... He'll say his name because yep. I'm going to keep saying my hand, Baloo, uh, and Rhett and Bruno. They both have a long existing, um, I, I think, I can only feel like a, a tiny screenshot of what your stuff was, but looks all very exciting in sci-fi. So if you want to tell us a little bit about yourselves as as authors, as um, as what you guys do, uh, we'll start off with Rhett. 
Um, yeah, so I've been a science fiction author for a long time. I was with Diversion Books and Random House Hydra, and then I also now am a fantasy author, and me and Steve co-write a it's called The Buried Goddess Saga that we're doing with Audible Studios this summer. Um, by day, I'm an architect, and I live in Connecticut. Okay. Perfect. Cool. Thank you very much. And um, I do have a, a. I think I promoted that book right when it came out. The Bubba Vies, right? The uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, yeah okay. I mean, if people are looking for a link, I'm, of course they can always just go straight to Amazon. But if you're on my page, feel free to scroll down a few, and you should see it. Yeah. Well, and if you guys want to wait, it's coming to audio this summer with Luke Daniels, which we're pretty excited about. So we'll probably kind of give it a nice little relaunch to go alongside with that release. Yeah. Well, good awesome. for you. Uh, thank you very much for yeah. the information. And Steve. Um, Rhett hates when I say this, but I sit in the corner and write books. Rhett, this is the corner that I'm always talking about. <laughs> it really is in the corner. It's uh, it's right there. Um, I, uh, I typically, uh, at this point, I'm really just writing whatever. <laughs> sure. uh, I just love writing. And uh, Rhett and I have been writing the Buried Goddess Saga, as he said. Um, most of my fiction history has been actually uh, superhero short fiction. Nice. Um, and then the, the superhero novel, which is uh, Brother Dust, the one that I'm, I'm donating to this wonderful cause. So um, I have a lot of sci-fi short fiction, but as far as, um, as, as the novels go right now, it's, it's the Buried Goddess Saga and the, Bar- and the Brother Dust, um, cool. the resurgence. Perfect. Thank you very, very much, cool, guys, for, cool. for again taking the time to, to join us in stream and for donating yeah. all your books. Um, I believe Dakota has c- put you down for about twenty or thirty a piece, um, and any selling them, right. you know, for pennies a page. But still, it'll yeah. it's all for charity. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, and thanks, guys, for coming on because I know this isn't exactly your wheelhouse. You know, um, I know you're fairly big in the uh, you know science fiction fantasy um, uh, sections, um, and this is kind of more of a focused subgenre that we are in um so it's really nice subgenre, guys- subgenre, yeah <laughs> yeah so it, it's really nice of you guys to you know um not only donate and you know take the time to be here um donate your time um you know it's it's super nice to make contacts outside of our own you know kind of awesome group but it's it's nice to kind of be branching out a little bit uh in who we talk to i think yeah, it's so good for you. us we've been we've been kicking around the idea of doing some some game lit so there might be uh, some things in the future there that we might cross paths. So that sure. could be fun. All the genres cross paths either way. <laughs> some, <laughs> one way or another. <laughs> Maybe romance. I don't know that we're yeah. flowing with yeah, the, all right. That's fair. Uh, genre. Yeah. Yep. Speaking of romance, I have, I, I don't know, my characters are kind of rocks. So hard to. <laughs> you have, you have one hard rock. to do. I don't have a cool setup of books behind me. I feel kind Neither of... Do I, don't worry. I'm not at all at the office. <laughs> Some I of us keep bad. prepared. It's okay. Dakota, you know what's really funny, man? When I when I first started reading your book, um, uh, Divine Dungeon, I I was like, is this is this main character seriously a dungeon? Like, I was... I, I, mind was just... I couldn't wrap my head around it. <laughs> it saved my life. But, uh... This I'm Adams glad. did it. He did a great job narrating it. I pretty much listen to books. That's all I do. I don't. I don't have time to read anymore. And he did such a great job narrating that book. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. I could. I could vouch for that. Steve messaged me, and he was like, "Dakota's main character is a dungeon." <laughs> it's like, what? It's, so, yeah, it's kind of weird like the outsider perspective like oh that seems like a weird thing but to me i was like oh this seems like like, like the perfect story i wish i wish i'd read it sooner uh, well, it's funny. Uh, i think i think one of us our, our response was he's either he's either the weirdest dude ever or the biggest genius ever you know something <laughs> like that or, or maybe he's on to something i don't remember what the phrasing was mm-hmm. but it is a cool idea, and it was a yeah, cool idea, you. and it worked. Oh, appreciate it, man. Yeah, I, I mean, I really like it, and it really lets me uh, explore, you know, just, you know, in the first place, just having a non-humanoid character, main character, just has its own unique challenges, but it really lets me get away with a lot, because, you know, if you have a perception that a human doesn't have, then hard, hard to say that they can't do that you know? sure yeah. well you had uh was it danny was danny the fairy yeah yes. I mean, uh, the, wisp, was, yep. the wisp yeah um and the, you know that brought the element of, of humanity into it i think a little more than 
So that was good. That was good. And and of course, uh, the main character Kel is based off of my own personality, and uh, Danny is based off Danielle, my wife. So yeah. Um, <laughs> so and you know, uh, Vikas really. Um, he he. When I first heard, was listening to it, I was like, "Oh, he's making her sound like such such a terrible person." Because she's supposed to be like, "Oh man, Cal, it's so nice. You know, this is great. I love you. It's great." And and he's like, "I tell you what, Cal, you better get moving." And I'm like, "Oh my gosh, is that how I wrote that? Is that how people read it? Oh my goodness." <laughs> yeah, add a little sassy twain to that. That's funny. Yeah. Yeah. So, but it's it's really cool. Um, and it's, I, I'm sure you guys have the same feeling when you listen to the audiobooks. You're like, "Oh, is that how people are taking it? Like that? Yeah. That's." Yeah. <laughs> oh, I, I listen to like one page and I can't do it. <laughs> That's not an audio book guy. It's, I, it's, too, it's, it's yeah. too weird. I don't, I don't listen much at all. And listening to my own stuff is just extra weird. No, no. When I made my own audiobook, it was like I, I, I intentionally chose my narrator for her voice for my female characters, and I worked through like nonstop for like the first like couple weeks. Like, oh, this is what this character should sound like. This is what this scene should sound like. This is her tone during this scene, uh, and and so I was really super into like oh making sure like the tonally, um, like each character and each like you know set up for their relationships was came through on audio as much as it did on the page in my mind, I guess, um, and most of the audience like seems like but that's also like from the point of view of somebody who you know produced their own audiobook essentially through like acx as opposed to you know um, using tanto or, or anybody else who kind of does all the work but also make all like those little decisions too sure well we uh when when i first so i started writing web of eyes before Rhett came on Rhett was doing kind of developmental editing for it and i think he development developmental edited it so much man that's hard to say that, I, I, uh, I dev edited myself. Dev edited. That's so, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he just he dev edited it to a point where we're just like, you might as well just co-author this thing. And but the truth is, like, since day one, I was writing this series for Luke Daniels to narrate it. Oh, nice. that's nice. And so when we asked uh, Audio Studios if we could have Luke Daniels, like, I didn't. If they said no, I didn't know what. I was like, well, who's gonna? <laughs> well, you, you, don't, you don't have Luke Daniels' number, and you can't get him. No, I, I mean, I, I actually was talking to him. Before. Yeah, he was talking his, to him. Have it now, I bet. Yeah, <laughs> his, his prices are. are uh, he's so worth it, but his prices are beyond um, my well, you can meter pay abilities. Yeah. Yep. And yeah, so yeah. With, yeah. without Audible Studios, there's no way we would have been able to do it. We pushed hard for him too, and right. and waited a while, but it's, it'll probably be worth it. Yeah. I'm sure it will be. Yeah, I mean, I'll hope okay. so. Looks yeah, like Ray Porter, Ray Porter, and uh, Oliver Wyman were the the uh, competitions there, and man, they both did a great job. But Luke did a far better job. Sure. So, hey yeah. guys, <laughs> wow. <laughs> All right. Um, sorry, I have a bit of a cold, so that's what I'm drinking. Sure. Um, I, I had just finished. He's not my just evening. excited to see you. I had finished my evening coffee right before um, we got on, so now I'm on my evening water. Um, <laughs> So, um, we were talking a little bit earlier, like, uh, what do you guys have coming down the pipeline? Like, more books uh, coming up, so a couple of new series, anything we can look forward to? Uh, so, we have pretty much an explosion of audio stuff. <laughs> like, almost everything that I have ever done, and me and Steve Sears are all coming to audio, potentially all in July. Which <laughs> <laughs> I have my circuit trilogies coming to audio with Podium. In July, it's narrated by Jeff- Jefferson Mays, who does The Expanse, which is pretty cool. We have our Bridge Across the Stars anthology with Steve is in as well, and we developed that sci-fi bridge, and that's coming out in July with Tanner. We have our fantasy series coming out. It'll probably be August, the first book, when it comes out with Luke Daniels. But we're going to relaunch that series hard alongside him, and that'll come out. <laughs> and awesome. I'm- trying to get my Titanborn series to come out probably around the same time with Audible Studios. So we're kind of just putting all our eggs in the audio basket this summer and <laughs> going to go for it. <laughs> See what hatches. All right. <laughs> cool. And Steve, like, uh, so do you guys mainly work together or do you have like uh, separate stuff, a lot of separate stuff going on? It, it, it kind of depends on the moment. I think right now um, pretty much everything is together. Uh, I'm writing something that was just like, I, I just, just to throw away 10,000 words that I just had nothing else to do. And I decided to start a novel, but that was just because I was really not ready to do his co-author part in, um, in book three of Buried Goddess. So now I'm back on Buried Goddess. 
as soon as that's done, um, you know, we have plans to to jump back into a sci-fi series that we started last. What was it? I I, I always forget. Last we summer, last I guess. We finish it. Yet. Um, and We've so been book one for a while, and we're probably going to wind up going like an audio first kind of route with it. So we decided we should probably write the sequels. <laughs> Makes sense. <yeah. laughs> In the background, I'm I'm getting another superhero anthology together. Oh, nice. Um, doing that kind of slowly the other ones the first four i did real like rapid fire but um there's just too much going on right now to try to make it happen so i'm, I'm just gonna as stories come in once i have a good 10 i'll, I'll go ahead and release that so that's kind of where i'm at right now awesome man that's oh. really cool and i just realized um, we have three beards to one non-beard now that's right and, uh, you gotta get on it man so we were yeah. even for a little while being in the conversation uh, there was a majority and then it was even and now I'm outnumbered by the beards uh, a couple notes from chat uh, Charles Dean says a bunch of drunks and I'm not there he's disappointed but he also <laughs> says that he missed all the beer talk uh, so he's extra sad about missing all the beer talk earlier uh, there was one question from chat uh, from Jacob Taylor says in a party would you be the warrior tank healer rogue or mage so we'll start off with Dakota what would be your answer man so the tank, the healer, or the mage? Uh, we have basically your, your standard four. Warrior, tank, healer, rogue, oh. mage. So five. Oh, you know, as much as I love all the others, I have to go mage. Yeah. You know, I'm, I, so here's the thing. I, I could do fighter. You know, I could do fighter. I, I think I would tough. do fairly well at it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. The beard well, gives I mean, the, you the know. constitution bonus. <laughs> right, yeah. Um, <laughs> nice. <laughs> but, uh, it's uh, I'm not big on the press of bodies. Like I'm, you know, like if I get sweat and blood on me, I'm if it's not my own, I'm a little upset. Um, you have <laughs> a little upset with my own blood. That? Yes, I do. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I well, I used to I used to box and I used oh, to um, and I used to do combatives in the army. Um, and did you like so, just like forfeit when like blood got on you? Is that what that is? Oh no no no! I okay. just didn't like having their blood on me. Oh okay, that, that sounds fun. Yeah, it was it was not a fun thing. It was like ah man, there's so much. All right, anyway, um, <laughs> dry cleaning bills around. were through the roof. <laughs> um, let's see. So healer, like I love I love the healers. The healers are amazing. I love watching the healers and watching them work. But you really got to keep on top of like like. Not only everyone's like health, but you had to make like uh, you know you have your warrior who has like triple the amount of health, but it looks you know I, just, I can't I can manage that. I just don't want to. I'm I'm over here. I'm the guy that's like all right. So I have this spell. If I can chain this spell with this spell, I can do like triple damage. And if I do triple damage, then this guy's gonna go down in like 30 seconds instead of 45. And then if I do this one, and if I add this buff, I can I can crush this guy, and then I don't have to worry about anything else except you know damage per second. Right. And that's that's what I'm that's what I do. Do you like the focus of like what the mage can do and like exactly. the options instead of like worrying about oh yeah. who has aggro, who's who's doing what, what's the plan coming up, who you know exactly. who, who's dying? Um, right. I like that. So yeah. it's either mage or assassin, and that's pretty much my two options. And I'll take mage over assassin anytime. So DPS, hopefully, like the range DPS, basically. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. That sounds fun. Uh, what about you, Rep? Um, I mean, I'm just gonna go based off. of how I play video games and I usually always go with sword and shield or a rogue just because if I'm standing back I get pretty bored so, <laughs> okay, so you, like to, you like to be in the action sword and board man yeah, always, always like no matter what I wind up picking someone who's up in the action and then I get mad because everyone else hurts a lot more and has so many cool moves but yeah otherwise I you know you got to stay focused in there every every good group needs a tank I mean otherwise you know, aggro goes everywhere. The mage dies first, that's for sure. Um, Cause he's doing so much DPS Then the rogue and healer goes down and, you know, so without the tank the tank is definitely the, the core, the foothold of the group. So that's, that's right. So far we have a pretty balanced group so far. Um, what about yeah. you, Steve? <laughs> well, my, uh, I got two small kids. So my video game days are over, but I'm a D and D guy. And, yeah, all right. and I would go, I would go rogue every single time. You're supposed to say healer. He's such a bad pastor. <laughs> that, man. I'm bad. I, so I'm a pastor, but I'm not a, I'm not a clergy in these games, right? So I am 100% a thief, uh, assassin. You you call it. I'm a rogue. I want to be sneaking around. And when you guys are battling, I'm trying to steal the gold, man. Nice. You guys distract him, and I'm going in. <laughs> he can every be time. devoted to like the god of darkness. It still works both ways. It's fine. Yeah. It's fine. It's fine. Stab the bad guys first. It's, no, forget the forget the bad. You get the bad guys. You are the big oaf <laughs> with the sword, and I'm making the moves. 
I like it. So there you go. So we have a uh, we have a mage. We have our uh, sh- uh, shield and sword Thank tanker. You. We have a rogue who will pick our pockets while we're fighting. Oh, um, Daniel is an amazing healer in any game she plays. So, okay, so there you go. Like, now is, that's, that's not even stereotyping. Like, now is that just because like you? That's what you convinced her to do when you were playing no, MMOs or something together. Like, no, hey, honey, you know on. what the best role is? Healer. No, dude, she's full on. She's yeah. full team commander plus healer. So she's like, all right, you need to do this. You need to do this. You need to do this. All right, heal you. You go. You buffed. You go faster. Go, go, go. Oh, is she is and she like, like yelling at people like during like the stream or like the chat? She's like, get on there. I have seen her yell at the screen, but I don't think she's ever yelled at her teammates. You know, okay. push the my, dock so she can. My wife, my wife totally yells. <laughs> we, my wife was, and I were playing um, God of War four recently, and it's like one of the few times like I've seen her like curse at the television <laughs> because like bad things are happening. She's like, "Stupid kids, stop! Just be helpful!" And you know, very frustrated yeah, that, yells at the television. That kid in the beginning is real. <laughs> real. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So there you go. Um, okay, my turn. I think um, I would definitely. Well, if we have a healer, um, we have a warrior, we have a tank. Looks like I get to be anything I want to. Um, yep. I'm probably gonna go with a mage as well. Um, ooh, nice. maybe an artificer. If I'm gonna ooh, specify. There you go. Uh, I like making stuff. I can make all the groups things. I can keep their gear in a nice tip top shape. Um, I always loved uh, the Eberron um, expansion for D and D. I would love to be a warforged uh, artificer. That's definitely always always in my like my dream class to see in, like a video game somewhere. It's just never happened, uh, which makes me sad. But uh, artificer, a maker. Other than that, probably a mage. I'm, I'm I'm definitely with Dakota. I'm like, I want you to die way over there before you get to me. Uh, and that's always been my philosophy. So there. Um, another question. Um, so uh, Danielle actually asked, "How did you two meet, Stephen Rhett?" Meet it was a really cold night, and I was I, I just needed, <laughs> needed comfort. And I saw Rhett walking down the street, and he had on the no, uh, so I, I um, him. <laughs> we met through we met through Sci-Fi Bridge. Um, oh, I'm a graphic artist as well as a pastor, and they needed a uh, they needed a logo. Oh. Um, I wanted to be a part of oh, so Sci-Fi Bridge. They needed prayers, and they contacted they prayer. You. They, need, they, needed, they still need prayer. They actually do. Yeah, yeah, we definitely need that, but. We need to look um, well, they, yeah, I just I wanted to be a part of Sci-Fi Bridge, and I didn't qualify to be to be brutally honest. And um, and they needed a logo, and so I gave them a logo in exchange for being a part of the thing. And uh, it was definitely I got the better end. There's no doubt in my mind. <laughs> yeah, the logo is not that great. Nah, it's, <laughs> you know, I didn't know what I, I just I just threw together something. Come on, I, I just get out of here. Yeah, you get you two sound like. Uh, Dave and Taj, or Dave and Ramon, or Dave and Charles, or Dave and... So Dave and uh, I'm, seeing a, I'm seeing a pattern here, actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, cool, guys. Um, let's see. Oh, uh, do you guys... Another question. Uh, how many, uh, Do you guys write yourself in your books? Huh. Like, um, you either are you your own main character, or do you actually write your physical name into your books? Actually, Steve used my name as a joke in our, in our <laughs> fantasy book, but that was just like a one-off like a character from name. Uh, I never really write anyone I know into my books, which is good because they, the ones I write alone are pretty violent. And I don't <laughs> think I know anyone in that li- in that line of work usually. Um, I try to, I guess, sprinkle things that I believe throughout, but I, I pretty much separ- try to separate, honestly, from all the characters and let them just be themselves. Sure. Um, I really I love writing first person, and um, the, the, the fantasy series is not first person. But every first person character I write is pretty much my sarcastic, snarky. Uh, I mean, it's 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 so easy for me to write first person because I just write me, and it works out pretty well. I'm. Uh, yeah, I wrote, I wrote an old guy who was about to die. <laughs> pretty good. And, and actually, that I think that fit you really well. Uh, honestly, he was like my deep thoughts of just not wanting to be <laughs> I don't buy I don't I don't doubt that one bit. <laughs> you are the roach. Yeah. Cool. Um, let's see. Cool guys. This is super awesome. This is super fun. Um oh uh quick thing, while we have been talking this evening, uh during the chat, um we have raised three hundred and seventy dollars for charity already. Nice. For nice. uh St. Children's Research Hospital. Um, and, uh, 70% of the items have been bid on, 
Uh, so that's pretty awesome, guys. Fantastic. Um, yeah. So, and like I like I said, you know, I'm, I do this once per segment. Um, it's uh, St. Jude's Children's Hospital, and it's for um, you know the research on uh, you know diseases, and it also helps cover the medical costs of children going through any procedures that they need. Because uh, St. Jude's, as far as I know, I could be wrong, but I'm fairly certain they don't charge for their services. Uh, so you know every everything you guys are doing out there, all the like, all you guys, all the authors who donated, uh, not only their books but their time, and the people that did want to but couldn't because they didn't have physical, you know, merchandise. Uh, thank you all so much. Um, and uh, to all the people that are you know putting in bids, thank you all as well because obviously we we wouldn't be making any money for charity without you. So um, great. And back to the fun part. <laughs> so cool. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Now. Um, I am just wondering, like, so you guys do science fantasy, right? Like, uh, sci <laughs> wow, science that's fantasy. Science fiction, because in my head it's always science fiction fantasy. Is. So you do science fiction, like, um, do you, I mean, obviously there's fantasy elements in that, but do you guys ever see yourself moving into, like, um, more high fantasy stuff, swords and sorcery and uh, throwing around magic, or are you definitely machines are the way to go? Well, really, the web web of eyes is uh, is one hundred percent swords and sorcery. So, um, it's uh, well, I, yeah, high fantasy. Yeah, you knew that. You just you just I did. I, I just no. I I'm, I'm reading this. Um. So no, and yeah, I I yeah, it was and it was a very good book actually. I was I was very impressed by um how in depth it was. Um, and <clears throat> I I meant more just like so you guys see yourself as science fiction though. Like, do you do you see yourself moving into Fantasy, like more hardcore fantasy, like well. Hardcore. You want to take it, Rhett? You know, you got. You, there's your answer. No, I, I, I think Steve would definitely love to write fantasy. Heartbeat. Forever. I'm more into writing space opera type stuff, but you know, we've kind of taken our fantasy series in a real interesting direction, so it's been fun to write. Fantasy was actually the first thing I wrote. I self-published a series at like 16, and that was pretty high fantasy, probably a similar genre. But uh, I've gotten pretty into science fiction, and as far as what I would write on my own, it would probably be more of the gritty, dark type science fiction I have before. Even even the science fiction me and Steve write together was more of a pulpy, lighthearted, fun science fantasy sort of story with aliens and alt history and stuff. So I think together we have a brand, whether it's science fiction or fantasy, of that more pulpy adventure, lighthearted story that has some darker tones, but they're kind of snuck in there compared to what I write on my own. Okay. Uh, I would write, I'd probably write fantasy exclusively if there was, there, there's not, not nearly the market in the independent world in the fantasy, uh, in the fantasy side of things as there is in the sci-fi side think there's of things. Working, but I don't, it's not as easy to break into as it's different. Yeah. It's much yeah. different. Um, I would totally put spaceships and aliens into the buried goddess saga just to mess with everybody if it were up to me. I mean, <laughs> I've never mentioned that to Rhett, but like I would <laughs> in a heartbeat. <laughs> we can have people come from above in like book five. What's that? We could have like a ship land from above. Like, Tell me, man, that would be, we world. did a D&D &D mod or a D&D &D, um, uh, campaign once where it was, where the, a spaceship landed and it was one of the most exciting, fun things. Uh, our DM <laughs> did some amazing things with it. And man, it was brilliant. That could be cool. <laughs> let's, right. let's let's do it. We, we gave our hand away, so now we can't do it. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> St. <Saint> Jude! <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty awesome, guys. Um, cool. So, yeah, it's um, that's cool. And I know you guys are both fairly big in your, your circles. And, yeah, I, I have uh, talked with Rhett fairly extensively on this. Um, I'd say, um, you know, how how different it is between our – current genres like most of the science fiction guys are like hey you know just put the work out there and we'll read it just don't expect us to you know do much in the way of like promoting you or like sharing you like we we are going to read it and enjoy it and that's it is that kind of how you guys well, see your no, fan i base? found it the opposite i found yeah. the really? okay. readers and the science fiction mailing list and the that audience are seem way more engaged as far as connecting with the authors and I mean, I yeah, totally backwards. Sorry. <laughs> that's cool. um, and I, that's just because I run Sci-Fi Bridge and Fantasy Bridge. And we kind of approach them the same way. And Sci-Fi Bridge is, is huge, and it was it grew really fast, and it's really easy to keep growing. 
whereas the fantasy bridge reaching those audiences seems a little bit tougher. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I see it. You see it on Amazon. Like indie authors own those Amazon charts in science fiction and fantasy. You still see Game of Thrones, Pat Rothfuss, and all the big guys up top. And then the game lit authors have really taken over a lot of those spots. Right. And, I mean, there are a bunch of big indie fantasy authors, but it seems to be a lot of the same people. I, I don't see that many breaking in. But then again, audio in fantasy seems like a way bigger thing and way more important to those audiences. So sure. once we get into that side, that whole, that might cancel out. That makes sense, and I, I can see how the uh, you know people that consider some themselves more science fiction would want to be able to physically look at it and like maybe even take notes and be like, all right, so here's what this says it is, and you know like oh it's three cubic three cubic meters. Are you insane? That would never fit in there. That's you know like I can see that they would like look at that. Whereas the fantasy genre would be more like oh yeah magic. <laughs> yeah, no <laughs> science fiction reviewers can often can be brutal. Especially when you're not writing like hyper realistic Martian type science fiction, mm-hmm. like there's a reason it's called space opera. You know, you're kind of well, just trying to make yeah. it real. It doesn't have to follow all the laws of physics. But <laughs> some some reviewers don't know know that there's a difference between like hard science fiction and space opera. So they can be rough, as Steve probably knows yeah. as well, brother. Brother Dust got got shredded a little bit. Um, I mean, we, we had good reviews all around, but it got shredded several times because it was it was really science fantasy. There was yeah. there was so yeah. little science fiction in it, and I even advertised it in this in the superhero genre. It was it was advertised as a space opera for those who love superheroes and vile villains. Like that was the whole thing. But man, you got your sci-fi guys out there that were just so angry at every. I mean, you know, fantasy. There's a lot of hand wavium. You know, you can get away with a lot of hand wavium. In in sci-fi, there's there's not a lot of room for that if you don't use the term fantasy. So, no, and it's true. I mean, I had like a beta re- reader, someone who I've worked with before and stuff. Who like there was one scene in one book where a character's piloting a ship around and shooting bombs down in space. And he was like, well, that could never happen that fast. I was like, yeah, things are really far apart in space, but I don't want to spend 10 pages <laughs> of her flying around shooting bombs. Like it, it, it didn't have to last that long to get, you know, what? Point <laughs> Craig across. Allenson, Craig Allenson has his series expeditionary force. And he's, he's one of these guys. I've, it was the most amazing thing ever. He's got these, these spaceships fighting from light years away. Uh, he did exactly what you're talking about, but it wasn't military sci-fi by any stretch, and it wasn't you know huge battles in space. But every time there was a battle, uh, neither of the parties could see each other, and they were just it was it was pretty intense and it was cool. Yeah, so that's how the Expanse does. If you watch the show, which is mm-hmm. like a it's an awesome way to show space battle, but you know there wasn't a battle. It was she's shooting down nukes being flown by no one. <laughs> so. Right. I, you can't really build up the drama of the distance between that and that way. So that's where I'll focus more on story when it really comes to it being story versus hyper realism. Hey, Dakota, why should I read Rituals? Ritualist? Um, yeah. So it is a great story, in my opinion. Um, <laughs> so it is. Um, so what I try to do is I try to take science and replace it with magic. Right, so I try to give very good reasons why the things work the the way they do. I, I try not to do too much hand wavium. Um, <laughs> you know, obviously there's going to be some, but uh, basically it's just a different form of energy that people are able to utilize. Um, so uh, with ritualist, it is all about uh, utility. So compared to um, the high powered, high you know flamethrowers, fireballs, it's more. Um, long long build up so this guy um so this guy so the main character's name is joe because it's really hard to write out like abinov um you know three thousand times um, <laughs> so uh joe is able to uh he, he starts the game and uh, it pulls a lot from uh, my own experience like in the military uh my own experience like playing games and what i like to see um so what he does is he makes rituals, which are essentially spells that have um, a very high initial cost, but they are 
either much more powerful or they last much much longer so um in the second book he gets into like uh well it's not out yet but in the second book he gets into a lot more uh like big things going on like big effects um and in the first book you know it just shows how you don't need to be uh you know overpowered to get things done basically so I'm, I'm still working on a good elevator pitch for that. Sorry about that. <laughs> that works. <laughs> totally accurate, man. <laughs> can, can I ask one more question? Yeah, please, man. Um, are we are we still allowed to use the words uh, the the title lit RPG? Is that still legal in this? Yeah, I, I mean, so, <laughs> I use it on all my stuff. I sure hope so. <laughs> so yeah, so it's. It's an interesting thing. So lit RPG is they they are trying to break it up, which is fine. Like I, I don't particularly mind how people like to label their own things. Um, so lit RPG has kind of uh, been pushed to be specifically RPG games, right? Uh, where game lit now is more of a broad, overreaching thing. Like uh, you have your RPGs, you have your first-person shooters, you have you know all this other stuff, and that kind of falls under that umbrella. Okay, so yeah, if okay. you were to if you guys were to give advice to us, because like I said earlier, we're we're kicking around the idea. We have a couple of pitches mm-hmm. uh, for some game lits, and I would love to to know what your um, your advice would be for elements that absolutely have to be in the story mm-hmm. for the readers to be to appreciate the 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 books. So Ramon can definitely take this one because he I, has a whole rubric. Cool. Oh yeah, I have a whole thing. I do a podcast, the Letter Petit Podcast, um, reviewed and read over six hundred Letter Petit novels uh, in the last couple of years. So I have a huge base of like things I enjoy and things I don't. Okay. Um, if you're going to write in either it's game little Letter Petit, um, you kind of um, have to understand the the things that readers enjoy, uh, and then that's going to vary uh, to a to a great degree. But it's going to go around the game system, the, the, whether that's RPG right. or first position shooter or uh, real time strategy or turn base, whatever it is, there's this huge swath of like stuff that's available and that you can pull from as authors. And I highly encourage you to try to be um, original, but also like don't hesitate to actually describe the game mechanics. Like the, that's the right. thing that draws the readers in the most is that the reason they read this over fantasy or over sci-fi right. is because this makes them feel like they're playing their favorite video games right. and, and, not everybody has like a hundred hours to spend on an MMO or RPG anymore. And so if you can capture that vibe uh, and like that same experience of like, Oh, I'm being drawn into this great story with all these RPG mechanics that I can, that I can appreciate and relate to, then that's going to keep them going. Um, Specifically like for little RPG, um, the things that I look for um, uh, that, that kind of qualify it at, at minimum is like, Oh, you're not hiding the fact that this is a video game. You're not hiding the fact that this is an RPG world or that there are RPG mechanics here. Um, if you do so, that kind of makes it feel like it's more like a fantasy story, which is fine if that's what you want to write. But if you're specifically targeting these audiences, they expect it to be pretty obvious that this is either a video game or 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 rule or, or ruled ruled by RPG mechanics. Um, so like you don't feel like you have to hide um, anything. Like if, if you see if you want to write game notifications and like stat sheets and damage notifications, all those things are very prevalent among um, things that people like. I mean, there's always going to be a, 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 a population of people who like different variations of it and and how much it is. Mm-hmm. That's up to you as the author, um, sure. whatever you're comfortable with writing. But don't hide the things right. that we love. Yep. about the genre which is always going to be oh those rpg mechanics those right. game mechanics because the, again, that, the, the that's what we're coming for that's yeah. that's what it is like really is okay so your progression so uh i don't know what time i don't, I don't know if we have time i just okay so um i read i read a lot okay and okay. so like i've recently read um both of these are great books right so blaze corvin's um delvers, delvers LLC. LLC. yep okay and then the, then um hugh hesco hugh hugo Hesco's. Hugo Huesco's yep. uh, Dungeon Lord, right? So I think that was what it was called. So mm-hmm. in Delvers, um, it was, you know, take them out of a world and put them in the world created by a god that that kind of functioned as a video game, but there wasn't necessarily those stat page elements. No, no, again, his, his, his novel okay. in particular is of a... M- kind of a combination category portal fiction and an RPG and it works for me. And that's mostly because when he does the RPG stuff, it's super thorough. 
Like a lot of the story still is just portal fiction, which is perfectly fine. But he's also incorporated like a very detailed um, structure system of like them getting powers and it being very of much of an RPG game system. Um, and and as long as it's there, as long as it's again, it's not hidden. Like the things that the characters see are described on the text page. It's not him thinking in his brain, oh, I, I'm wondering about these powers and what they're going to be and someone describes them, but I'm not giving the radio details. He actually details out what all the different powers are, you know what I mean? And that, and he's right. he's still hitting those same vibes where people are like, oh yeah, this is this is like RPG mechanics that I can relate to, but at the same time, he's still doing like a military science um, portal fiction fantasy story, and so he's he's kind of hitting both both nods. Um, Blaze Corvin also has another series called The Secret of the Old Ones, which feels a little more um, mainstream lit RPG uh, in that it's it's set in MMO and it has a bunch of like more detailed stuff there. But like I said, there's there's a huge swath of like readers who can appreciate both, but the right. the common denominator between them all is that those RPG mechanics aren't hidden away. And you can very clearly see the progression of your characters in like text terms of like, oh, he gains a level or he gets a rank or he he's increasing his health whenever he levels or whatever the case is. All those same things that you appreciate in a and d campaign or in like an MMO or in like an RPG game. Part of the draw, uh, at least for, for a lot of people, is like you go from hero to zero, but it's not hidden away in like fantasy terms of like, oh, the... He gets a magic sword. It's, oh, he gains exactly. experience points. He he gains right. levels and he plans out his character. And, you know, all those other things that us as gamers can all relate to and creates mm-hmm. creates this instantaneous common um, frame of reference for everybody. And so you're already creating, you're already kind of creating, you know, tapping into like that gamer culture whenever you're writing like a good little RPG story. Okay. Cool. For a novice, I mean, I- can you t- explain what the hell portal fiction is? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so if if i'm if i'm uh, in the context correctly uh there's a few different ways that people get into the games uh some of them are like you kind of like fall through a portal or god transports you into that world and that's more portal fiction and then there's uh more more lit rpg s kind of more sciencey version of it is that they're playing a game and they're their minds are in the game itself, so it's like a virtual reality or, um, you know, like deep dive, um, you know, brain activity, basically. Um, so I think Portal is more they are physically, bodily transported into that world, whereas Lit RPG otherwise is more they're in a game. Yeah, there's definitely yeah, two big, two there's definitely two big ways of like getting people in the game world. Either it's yeah. transported to a game world, which is like mm-hmm. and reincarnation, or you you literally step through a portal, or some right. god takes you from one place to another. Uh, but mm-hmm. in those instances, like oh, the, it's a fully functioning either sci-fi, fiction, or fantasy world, but the world is ruled by game mechanics or RPG mechanics, and right. so instead of like regular normal physics there's just a different system in place, but it's still very much set. Like you, it, it's as um, functional and as binding as, as normal figs. You just have terms that the readers are used to seeing. Like, oh, if you kill a thing, you get a, you get a damage notification, but how much you hit it for is very much ruled by actual rule sets. The same way that, you know, your D and D rules are ruled by actual numbers and roles. And there's a, there's a, there's a range, but you're not doing like a million points of damage on like a, on a D 20 roll necessarily. You know what I mean? So there's it, it, that, that feeling that is still there. Um, the other way of course is like Dakota said, you know, you log into a VR system. Um, a lot of that is is like based on like future technology that totally doesn't exist. Um, oh, so hope. it's so it's either like oh you're putting on a headset or you're sitting in a pod and like you're you're transported into like an MMO game or a video game. Like um, a good example of this would be um, Way of the Shaman by Vasily Mihenko. It's a really good example of like oh that kind of system where you're you're basically you're you're in a pod physically, but your mind is transported to a, like a video game role and you get to create whatever character you want to. You go through the whole character creation process and there's a lot, it feels a little more maybe video gamey um, potentially sure. um, in that like you have a lot more game terms, NPCs act stupid like they do in regular video games. I mean, alternatively, you could, it, it could just feel like a regular fantasy world and that's also a choice, but those are like the two main ways people kind of go into their <laughs> lit RPG stories. There, there are other ways to do it, of course, <laughs> um, but those are probably the big ones. Okay. Cool. Um, any other questions right off the uh, off the bat here, guys? Or because I mean, you, got, you guys can always you guys can always reach, reach out to me or probably sure. Ramon too and chat. Um, <laughs> um, but uh, anything else on this, or else uh, should we start wrapping it up? No, no wrapping it up? All right, sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> so it looks like we're just about done, folks. So thanks a lot for hanging out with us here on on the show for these. Uh, 
coming up almost two hours at this point. Yeah. Um, so everyone yeah. who's been hanging out all this time, all like 12 or 14 of you, thank you so much. We've got some people come in and out. Uh, we missed yep. the whole conversation in chat room about bards and missing beards. <laughs> and um, and, so, and uh, one suggestion was like, we should do a hunks of lit RPG calendar next year, which I'm totally for. I I'll be the cover guy. Just don't don't get mad when sales go down. I'll uh, I'll take the photos. I guess I don't know. Oh, that's that makes me less comfortable. Um, <laughs> that, well, I'm just saying right now, man. If I were murdered, my chalk outline would be a circle. So um. <laughs> that's fun. We we can be the dad bods. Uh, of yeah, the RPG. dad bod. There you go. That's totally cool with me. But everyone, thanks for hanging out with us. Um, um, again, Brett, and, uh, Rhett, and Steve, thanks for hanging out and for donating to this thing. It it I, I know. You know, you don't have to, but you're very kind in coming on and also um, donating nice. to this for the kids of St. Jude. Mm-hmm. Right. And um, one more thing, guys. Uh, so just want to let you know. So in the hour and 44 minutes that we've been talking, um, we have had all of our items bid on. Um, so every everything, someone is, everyone is trying to buy something. And in this time, we have reached, let me refresh just to be double sure. We, so 535. We have five, Five hundred and thirty-five dollars reach uh, right That's now, raise awesome. for nice. St. Jude's, and um, this auction does go until next week, Saturday at midnight. So it at, that's when it ends. Um, nine so days week, from Saturday now. Midnight. Yep, nine days from now. Um, and so you know, uh, you know, it's for a very good cause. You get a whole bunch of books. Um, of course, if you are just happy to donate, feel free to donate directly to St. Jude's. Um, Children's Resource Hospital. Uh, it's uh, you know they don't charge their patients, uh, and uh, they definitely need the help. Um, and so uh, again, thank you to all the authors that uh, donated books and their time, and thank you to all the authors that wanted to but um, weren't able to for various reasons, such as not having physical copies of their books, or um, you know they're out of the country or whatever it is at the time. Um, and also a big thank you to Ramon for uh, you know co-hosting this with all the, his amazing experience setting up these streams, and to one more to Danielle Kraut, my lovely wife, who uh, set up the website for the uh, auction house or for the auction center and did all the collages, all the all the work, uh, getting everything together. And uh, yeah, so thank you to everyone. <laughs> hey, thanks okay. for putting it together, man. Uh, it's Absolutely. awesome. Awesome thing. Awesome cause. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. And uh, thanks to Dave for, uh, you know, uh, Dave, Dave actually gave me the, um, he offered to um, buy a book from, he just offered, he's like, hey man, I'll give you X amount of money for just a book if you want to just give that to charity. And I said, Dave, you know, that's a great idea. Let's, let's make a whole, I mean, I'm going to make a whole charity auction. And he's in, so, so thanks to Dave Wilmarth for putting that idea in my head. So, yeah, wonderful. Uh, yeah, and Perfect. thanks again, guys, for coming on. Thanks, everybody. Yeah. If you guys want to all say goodbye to everybody, we'll end yeah. the stream. Um, Dakota, say goodbye. Oh, bye, everyone, and thank you all so much again. And I hope you enjoyed the uh, the stream. And uh, you know, always free, feel free to come and chat with me. And Rhett. Yeah. yeah. Bye, everyone. Yeah, thanks for having me on here. Uh, make sure you go and donate. It was a lot of fun. Thank you, and Steve. Thanks for putting me next to Rhett. Makes me look a whole lot more handsome. <laughs> and y'all have a wonderful evening. <laughs> thanks all. And thanks everybody for showing up again and for donating. Uh, we'll have a link in the show notes for the uh, charity auction. Of course, how you can register and all the good stuff. And go send your money to St. Jude's, but also get some good stuff. Like there's yeah. legitimately some nice packages here. Um, Little RPG, science fiction, fantasy, um, and, and other stuff. So go bid on things. Remember, all money goes to a good cause. So thanks a lot, everybody. And I hope you guys all have a good weekend. Remember to go read some Little RPG. Bye, everybody. God bless. Make her.